What's up guys, Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros and PC Bros LLC and today we're going to show you guys how to build a PC and actually have it really well cable managed. Cable management is a part a lot of first time builders overlook and today we're going to show you the step by step process on how to make a PC go from looking like a cable mess to a really clean professional built PC. So let's not waste any more time and dive into the build. Alright guys, so Matt is going to go ahead and <laughs> IO shield and then lay the motherboard in. So, so we're going to lay this down, pretty yeah. easy to do that and we're going to take the IO shield as always. Don't forget the IO shield, it's very important. We're gonna go down here and maybe plop it in like so. It's important to get this in first because if you put the motherboard in after you put the IO shield in, it yeah, well, it just won't go in. All right, and here comes the motherboard. We're gonna go ahead and slide this in here. And for cable management purposes, since this is a micro ATX case, we really don't need to do the one screw method, but we're gonna show you guys if you happen to need to run stuff behind the board and we'll show what that looks like. So we're just gonna put one screw in the board. We're just gonna kind of do the middle of the board just so that it's held in place. And like Matt said, we really aren't gonna end up running anything behind the board since as you can see, this board fits really well in this case. But if it was like a full size case, the micro ATX board, you're gonna wanna run some stuff behind the board to make it a little cleaner. Let's go ahead and tilt this back up and start feeding some stuff through. All right guys, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and kind of undo this back here and then I'm gonna feed Matt through the front panel headers. So that's gonna be these guys right here. All right, so the front panel, uh, pretty straightforward. What you're gonna wanna do is go to this little spot right here, which is the front panel header on the motherboard. And we're gonna look at the bottom of it. It kind of shows you uh, where all the uh, connectors need to be, but I will go ahead and tell you where all the connectors need to be for this build. First, we got the hard drive LED right here. Oh, there it is. Look at that hard drive LED, woo. All right, so then we're gonna go ahead and plug that in right here on the bottom. Take the power LED. I won't make them focus on that again. <laughs> power LED, which is the positive and negative, we'll do this. And then we're gonna take the power switch and put it on the top one next to the power LED. Just like that. Now you see all these extra ugly cables? Jack is gonna take them back real quick. Yep, so I'm just gonna kind of pull these through. And obviously if you're building alone, you're just gonna kind of put one hand on the other side. And I'm just gonna go ahead now that we have that done, I'm gonna undo this real quick so it's not in the way. I'm gonna go ahead and shove the extra cabling kind of back here. So it's just out of the way, we know it's done. So now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in this Molex connector. I know Matt did this before, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it. He's gonna do it this time. Ooh. All right, so just like that. Sometimes these are really tedious, guys. Okay, I think that's good enough. All right, so our Molex is plugged in. I'm gonna go ahead and just shove that in the hard drive cage. I often like to kind of stick any excess stuff back there. And now we're gonna go ahead and continue feeding that stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and give him, we'll just focus on giving him like the stuff for the motherboard first. So I'm gonna give you the HD audio, which is gonna be the one that's missing a pin towards the middle. I'm gonna do this one underneath the power supply through that I little cutout it. there. There she is. It says HD audio on it. You might not be able to see it very well, but it does say HD audio, I promise. I swear. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug this into the bottom left right here. Same kind of pin layout as the front panel, but it's all one connector, so it's so much nicer. Same deal, we're gonna push this back through. It's gonna look nice and clean. Now we have USB 2.0. We're gonna go ahead and feed that through here. Same deal, looks like HD audio, but it's not missing the pin in the middle, it's missing it on the outside. So we're gonna go ahead and plug it in right here to this USB 2 header. Again, every one of these headers below it will say, hey, what, this is what it's for. And sometimes they just won't even plug in if they don't fit, so. USB 3, very large, usually blue connector. We're gonna go ahead and do that right below where the 24 pin's gonna go. Yep, USB 3, blue and large, as Jackson said. <laughs> So they called me in high school. <laughs> Papa Smurf. All right, so now that we, actually we're gonna go ahead and do the ARGB2. So now we're gonna plug in the ARGB3 pin. That's gonna go, uh, I think, where was that up top? Uh, right here. This is one that if you are gonna use ARGB fans, you wanna be able to control it via software, you plug in this to that. Right yeah, there. sometimes though you'll have like a hub, other times you'll have nothing if you don't have RGB. The RGB is really what makes builds the most complicated in all honesty. Boom. So now we're on to the actual powering of the board. So this is your big main power, the 24 pin or the 20 plus four pin. We're gonna go ahead and run that through where we ran the ARGB header. This is a 20 plus four pin because motherboards used to only use 20 pins, but pretty much anything standard that you're building nowadays is gonna use 24 pins. So you just gotta pinch these together, kind of do a little flip de flip and then we're gonna potentially Plug it in, make sure it clicks, and he's gonna take it back, look at that. Gotten rid of, now I'm gonna give him the CPU four plus four pin, sometimes it'll just be a solid eight pin, sometimes there'll be two of these. Now one thing we do recommend is, as you can see, this is very easy because we're using a stock cooler, but if you're using a big aftermarket cooler or an AIO, you're not gonna have that kind of room up top, so you're gonna wanna plug this in before you actually even screw the motherboard into the case. And they are two separate four pin connectors, so you just need to push them in together, and they'll plug into the eight, because four plus four equals eight, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, and then the last connector I'm gonna go ahead 
this thing through before I'm just gonna shove these cables off to the side is the PCIe power. This is what's gonna power the graphics card if you have one. And this will usually be different too. Sometimes it only needs a six, sometimes it needs a six and an eight. And now I'm gonna take these extra cables and obviously Matt's gonna be putting the graphics card, but extra cables, I'm just gonna go ahead and just shove these all into here. And then I'm just gonna wait for Matt to finish up front with plugging things in because if I start cable managing now, I might need to undo it. I'm done, what do you mean? Of course. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna install the graphics card real quick. Um, not necessarily part of this video, but you know what? We'll give you all a little bit of a guide here. So we'll go ahead and take the screw you all, open up the hinge, and then we're going to pop out one of these break off tabs. We're gonna smack the graphics card on the side of the case. Now Jackson needs to give me two power supply screws. Does it work? Oh, he gave me these coarse thread. Some different ones. Freaky ones. Normal. Okay. Attach this little piece back on the hinge. Now this is the part of cable managing I have to do on this side. There's really not a whole lot you have to do um, on the normal PC side, but we're gonna go ahead and plug in our GPU power like so. Connect this together, it requires only an eight pin. Gonna plug that in and we're gonna have to do something with this. Sometimes you may have a power supply that only has the one connector and if that's the case, just tuck it in, you're good to go. But we're gonna make this thing look nice and clean with some zip ties. So we'll go ahead and line these up together so they kind of just, we're tying them together to make them look like they're one cable. That's kind of what we're trying to do here. All right, and then we'll take the other one through again and we'll do one of those. Cool, just like that. Now I need something to cut these with. Please don't leave it like this, it looks kind of ridiculous. Honestly, what looks worse is if you, well, just didn't leave it, so. Snips, boom, boom. Then we're gonna twist these while Jackson pulls. And boom, twist and pull, magic method, it's good to go. Um, we can tuck some of these cables back in a little bit that got pushed out when he pushed that cable through, but for the most part, it's good here. Now this part's gonna be really easy on this case. Um, you're gonna have little like parts you can tie off, like you could use holes like these, or they actually have actual cable routing loops like these. I'm probably not even gonna use any of those because this case has so much room in the back. I'm really just, my goal is to just route all the cables together in like one single run, just because I think that's gonna look the cleanest. Um, rather than having like a bunch of separate cables, uh, you know, running in different spots, we're gonna try to just do one big bunch of cables. And obviously some cases are gonna have a lot less room, some will even have a good amount more, and some will have a lot more cables. Like if you end up going with, you know, a lot of custom ARGB, or like let's say you go with like Corsair, NZXT, or anything like that, you might end up having a lot more cables than this um, and, and they might be coming from multiple different spots so that might be where you have to have a couple different runs of cables but at the end of the day as long as you run them together they'll look pretty clean like this you know that's really not too bad at all we could go all out and like try to make it go a little bit smoother and like add you know maybe five more zip ties but i call this very acceptable so now i'm going to go ahead and snip my excess cable ties all right, that looks pretty good. So now we're just gonna go ahead and show you guys the finished product uh, and turn the PC on. All right guys, well, that is how to practically build and especially cable manage a gaming PC. Obviously every case is going to be different and depending on how much RGB or lack thereof RGB you have is going to make a major difference. Start adding some Corsair RGB fans in like a 240 or 360 mil AIO and you're gonna have a lot more cables, but the process is still very much the same. Just try to make sure you pick the right board for the case and everything and then you're not gonna have to worry about doing any specialty runs or anything. So yeah, if you like this tutorial video here on the PC Bros channel, be sure to subscribe and comment down below any other tutorials tutorials you want to see here. We like to reserve this channel for PC tutorials and guides and also showcasing some of our awesome PCs at pcbros.tech that you can buy today. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching today's video and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.